Hello and welcome back to Sock and Lock. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. What I want to talk to you about this time is this combination padlock made by a company by, called Zehe. That's Z-H-E-G-E. Although I have seen them um, on different, uh, under different names, um, but they are quite distinct in their shape with this uh, angular cut this way, the angular cut this way, and the uh, thumb guards. So I have seen them um, being produced or badged by uh, other companies. So why did I uh, want to try and decode this lock? Well, as I say, it's on Amazon, but on Amazon UK uh, site, it's their number one bestseller with them selling in this particular color they are selling over 3,000 units a month um, they're readily available on eBay so I thought I'd pick one up and uh, give it a go uh, they're relatively cheap at the moment on Amazon this particular color is uh, sub five pound uh, which is uh, a pretty good bargain really so um, what I'll do is I'll get the vice out and uh, we'll go about trying to decode this. Hello and welcome back. I've just put this uh, padlock in the vice so it stays in focus and makes it easier for you to view. So this combination lock, this cheap combination lock, caused me more grief in trying to decode it than most of the other locks I've got. So I've got another uh, Zihi, a different type, uh, as I say in uh, video number 21. And I don't know if this is difficult to uh, decode because of good tolerances or bad manufacturing tolerances. Uh, so normally what I would do is I would pull on this shackle. I would turn these wheels and wait for the shackle to move slightly and then move on to the next wheel and onto the next wheel, and onto the next wheel, and invariably it would open. Uh, another technique I'll view up, oh, the problem with doing that on this lock, because if you pull on the shackle, all these wheels lock up. So that technique wasn't going to work. So the other technique that can be used is to uh, pull on the shackle, and I've released the tension on the shackle now. And that's to find a wheel that is loose. Looser than any other. So seven looks looser. Uh, and then <clears throat> move on to the next one. And on to the next one. And on to the next one. Let's see if we can give you an example here. So it's, that's quite loose. That's quite loose. That's quite loose. And then this one, the first one, then stiffens up. So that wasn't going to work. The other method that I've described in uh, video number 27, the indirect method, where you turn this wheel until this wheel sees up, that didn't work either. The best technique I found was to very lightly pull on the shackle and wait for what a feel of movement in the shackle very lightly however this wasn't re repetitive i couldn't do it every time and it was so inconsistent i couldn't do it for a youtube video and it got to the point where i almost gave up trying to find a technique to decode uh, this lock. So I was about to give up and then one day I thought, well, I wonder if I can combine two different methods. So the method I uh, chose was, was to find a loose wheel on here. Maybe six, seven might be looser. And then Using the indirect method, see at which point this wheel stops turning. And it proved to be successful. So what I'm actually 
doing, I'm going to describe as the modified indirect method. So what I'm going to do for you is I am going to set this back to all the zeros, which is the code for this. And as you can see, the shackle is now out. I'm going to take a cloth. Uh, I need to move this slightly. I'm going to take a cloth. I'm going to put it over these wheels, over this padlock. And I'll stick my hands underneath it. And one by one, I'm going to change the wheels. So that's the first wheel. That's the second wheel. That's the third wheel. That's the fourth wheel. So I'm going to turn this shackle. I'm going to lock it back up and then spin the wheels. So, I'm now going to put these wheels back to zero, zero, so it's proof that the lock doesn't open. If it does open, I've developed another technique. So, that's one inch really locked. So I'm going to put some pressure on the shackle. I'm going to turn this wheel to try and find the loosest this as well. Two looks loose. So two looks the loosest. So now I'm going to turn this wheel and see at which point two the oh, second wheel sees us up. Two is looking useful. So two looks the most useful. So then I'm going to go onto this wheel, find the loosest wheel. Uh, it doesn't seem to be a loose wheel, so I'm going to move to it. So nine looks loose. So does zero. So it will look pretty loose. Just going to move this one because I'm expecting one of these or a couple of these to be looser than the next. So no, it looks pretty loose. Now nine seized up when it's turned to seven. So seven looks favorable. So seven looks favorable. Now two, let's see if we can find a number that is loose on this one. Again, nine looks favorable there. So turn this one. Now that's stiffened right up. So let's see if we got any luck with this. And there we go, it got me open. 
So that's my modified indirect method of opening this lock. I hope you found that useful. Um, as I say, I've only got one of these uh, combination locks. Uh, so if you've got one and you're into decoding padlocks, uh, let me know in the comments whether it's a difficult padlock to pick or whether I've just got one with poor tolerances. That's all I've got to uh, uh, speak to you about this week. Uh, thank you very much for watching. As I say, don't forget to like, subscribe and hit that notification bell. Thank you.